So let's make a start. I'll start right at the very beginning. Um, give you some information there about the actual project and who's responsible for it and so on. Um, who'd want to read this book? Well, obviously if you're watching these videos you're probably interested in it and basically if you want to build up a fully fledged Linux system from the basic LFS system then you'll definitely want to read this book. Uh, so there's about how the book's organized, all the major parts of the book and we'll go straight in to the welcome page. Um, this bit shows you what e each of the chapters are. So you can see, for example, security chapter is the first uh, main chapter where there's packages to compile. Um, you'll see me flit around. I've tended in the past just to go through the security chapter and install what I think is necessary. I won't be doing that this time. I'm going to go straight to the bits I think I want to install and as options for security or indeed anything else come up just be taking those links for those dependencies and um, installing those uh, packages as required. I'm not going to be installing virtually every single package as I did in my previous BLFS 9.1 videos. Um, certainly won't be doing any of the API documentation which seemed to get me into the biggest hole I'd ever been in before when I've built Beyond Linux from scratch. I think I've only ever done that one once before and um, it's unnecessary if you don't need the API documentation. Uh, I just wanted to create as complete a BLFS set of videos as I could um, but I imagine most people wouldn't be interested in that so I certainly won't be doing it this time. Um, so this bit's about the conventions for type typography in the book. So I think that's pretty much the same as Linux from scratch. Um, I'm skipping through these. I'd thoroughly advise you to read them carefully. Go through and read um, these parts, if not once, two or three times, just to get an understanding of how the book works and how it's laid out and so on. Um, if you appreciate that I, I've done this so many times, I've you know no quite well unless there's, I can see there's a big change. Um, I don't really tend to read this. I'll scan it quickly to see if I can see anything different but um, tend to just skip through these. So the fact that I'm skipping through them is not because I know it, it's because it's really unnecessary in the video. What would you rather have time to read the book yourself or listen to me reading what's on the page? You probably want to read it yourself in your own time. Um, so it's probably the best thing, I think. Um, yeah, there's mirrors for getting to Linux from scratch. So it's saying about that. About the source packages, the sources are on each package page. Um, sometimes there's an HTTP link and an FTP link, which is quite handy if a site's down or a version's changed. Um, these are all the updates since the last release. So I don't want to go through all that. And if you are interested, it can be quite a useful reference. Mailing lists, um, yeah, if you want some help, I, I can offer limited help. I, my time, if you understand, my time is limited. I do read comments on my channel. Uh, I try to answer all of them if I can, if I've got time. Uh, but as I do definitely read every single comment, and I do try and help out where I can, um, although. I'm not an expert, I, I'm not involved in Linux from scratch project. If, if I was an expert, I probably would try and get involved, but I'm not. I just do what you do is basically trying to get as much information as possible and try to make my way through it. So, um, yeah, the, but the, uh, you know, things I might say might not help you. So the best thing is to go to these mailing lists and ask the es experts or ask elsewhere on the internet for example in um, one of the uh, stack exchange type forums or maybe reddit perhaps and uh, there is some information there about asking for help and it is important to get the right information uh, I've even seen it on my channel where people have said I've got error 12 can you help me and 
well, like, that's not enough information. You know, what package were you installing? What was the error, you know, errors prior to that? What, what was the text and so on? So uh, this page does give you a bit of information about what, what's handy to people um, when you're asking for help. So there's a page there with credits to the editors and so on. Contact information again about how to contact the mailing lists. Important information. Um, yeah, so this is just telling you how to um, build packages. And, and it says that golden rule is only to use the root user when necessary. Now, initially, I will only be using the root user until we get to some point where it's um, convenient to create a un an unprivileged user, and that will probably be after the config files have been um, installed. So that will be after we've done the text browser, after we've done the mouse driver, and after we've done the wget um, package because at that point it'll be a little bit easier to copy and paste stuff. Um, and once we've got those config files, then it'll be uh, simple to create a unprivileged user, an unprivileged user with the uh, config files that we've created. Uh, tells you how to extract the files, which you'll be seeing me do anyway, and you've seen me done already in, uh, or you see me doing in Linux from scratch. Uh, maintaining file integrity uh, in Linux from scratch, each file was verified at the, at the beginning. There was um, an MD5 file which allowed us to check all the files before we started. Beyond Linux from scratch, because I don't know what packages you'll be installing or downloading, um, the responsibility is to uh, check each package as you download it. Um, I won't be doing that. It's quite onerous. Um, again, if you're using uh, or building Beyond Linux from scratch for a system you're going to be keeping and using, you probably do want to do that just to validate that the um, package you're downloading hasn't been tampered with or intercepted. Um, and this shows you several ways of, of doing that. Uh, this command here shows you how to create log files while you're installing so that could be all quite useful um, make files we'll be editing that if I remember uh, when we come to the command line and also saying here about automating the procedure which might be an option if you're rebuilding it over and over and redirecting during automating Um, yeah, there's bits here about stripping. Um, so it says if if you did not strip, so this is stripping the executables of debug information and other stuff that's not really required unless you're debugging. Um, it says here if you did not strip programs and libraries and LFS, which I did on the videos, the following will probably make your system unusable. To avoid that, run the instructions at that link there, stripping again. After the critical files are stripped, using those instructions, the instructions below can be run at any time. New packages are installed. So basically what it means is that after you've installed packages, if you run this, it will strip all this debug information out of the software that you've um, compiled and it will reduce the footprint of your installation slightly um, and it says there if you install um, programs that these other options you might not strip the files there too so what I'm going to do you'll see me doing this a lot is I'll keep this link up on a tab at this point to remind me at the end hopefully that I can run this once I've finished and um, strip everything just to make the system a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, some things there about auto tools and CMake, um, setting C flags and so on, meson. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that um, some of the flags 
won't get passed through. I'm not going to spend too much time. The point of this is not to optimize the system as much as possible. I'll be using optimizations to try and get a little bit of it optimized, but it's not the um, real purpose of this. It's just just to get get a little bit of uh, optimization. The purpose is just to show the installation of Beyond Linux and Scratch. So I'm not going to bother about this. If you do want to do this yourself, um, then by all means, you know, read this and follow the instructions. Although, as I said before, bear in mind that some optimizations can break builds or they can even break tests. There's something there about whether to install in user or user local. Um, I've never really bothered or been too concerned with this. Um, I've just gone through and done what the book tells me to do. Uh, something there about optional patch patches if you want to adjust the system. Again, as I say, I'll just do the plain vanilla BLFS, go through what they recommend. You should be able to build a fairly stable um, package. Uh, right now, I did say I was going to keep this page up, so I'll do that now. Let's strip it one more time, and then I'll right click this and open in a new tab, move to that tab, go back to where I was because straight away we've got this download here to download BLFS bootstrips. And obviously at the moment I can't do that because it's not an FTP link, it's on HTTPS. So I'm going to have to come back to do this and hope that I don't install anything that requires um, BLFS boot scripts. Now one thing that I could do when I boot into the um, Endeavor OS, the host Linux, to resize the partition, I could actually download these things here uh, at that point using the Endeavor OS and then put them on the partition. I'm not going to do that just to show you again how BLFS can be built from a really basic system and how you have to sort of plan how you're going to install it and come back to things and so on. And it could be that I have to install a package to get things going uh, with the minimum uh, functionality and then come back later on and reinstall it after I've installed a load more dependencies later on. So you'll see me rebuild packages because of that reason. So again, I'm going to leave this tab up here because it's got the link for this. And as soon as I'm able to download that package, um, I'll be downloading it because we will need it to install boot scripts to start up servers and demons and so on. I'm going to move next to the next link. This is about .la files. And once again, it's got a script here that um, needs to be copied and pasted uh, into the system, which obviously I can't do at the moment. As I say, this browser is separate. If I click on this window here, this is the actual Apple Mac window. Uh, that browser is just something that I'm overlaying on the capture, on the screen capture. So I can't copy and paste it, it's impossible. This cursor you can see is on the, the screen capture. Um, so I've got to leave that up there as well. So it doesn't necessarily mean I'll be copying and pasting from this, but the tab here acts as a reminder that I need to, uh, I've got more work to do that I've skipped over as I've gone through the book. Uh, so sorry, that's to do with whether to install static or shared. I believe most of the files installed use um, shared libraries for obvious reasons. Static libraries would take up more room, although if you're using Beyond Linux from scratch to build um, a specific system, you may want to be installing static packages, in which case you may want to read this. Locale related issues, so there's just stuff there about um, how locales can affect some programs and um, how to get around things. Um, there's something there, there's a little script there, I won't be installing this. It shows you um, any man pages that don't conform to um, this specific encoding. Um, it's probably not too
important oh it looks like they do create a script out of it so uh, i suppose we could install that to make the beyond Linux from scratch system complete if you're interested so we'll leave that up and let's go again to another new tab going beyond linux from, beyond linux going beyond beyond linux from scratch um now I tend to just stick to what's in the book. There are links to external third-party dependencies which I don't tend to go to. Um, I tend to just stick with within the book, uh, within the packages that are in the book. Um, however, saying that, when I've done previous Beyond Linux from Scratch videos, I have demonstrated how it is relatively straightforward to install a project that's not even mentioned in the book and that project that I normally go for is a game because there's no games in Beyond Linux from Scratch. So I thought, oh, it's it would be good to install install some games. Having said that, I think if you go for a full install of KDE, there's games within KDE. But this project is um, completely separate from everything else. It's called Wesnoth. Um, it does show that you do need to install some other external third-party dependencies to to get it installed. So. Um, I'll probably be doing that again, I imagine. Um, so that's what that page is all about, sort of giving some hints there about how to or where to install the project. And, you know, if you install it in a different prefix, all the changes you may need to make to ensure that prefix is known to the system.